Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our community meeting for Glen Hills Local Park Playground Renovation. My name is Evan Dintman. I'm the project manager for this project. And joining us tonight, uh, we have Patricia McManus, who is the design section manager for the Park Development Division, um, Richard Carmen, senior park manager for the Southern Parks Division, Jennifer Bruneau, project engineer, and Kathy Deerstein, the project manager for the Playground Renovation Program. And um, we're going to get started here in a second. But first, I want to just share some housekeeping items. So this recording will be, or, or this presentation will be recorded, and it will be posted to the project website. So if you have any neighbors uh, or family members or anybody in the community that you know would be interested in hearing about this park uh, playground renovation, uh, please feel free to um, share the recording with them. There is also a question and answer box at the upper right of your screen. Uh, we will be taking questions uh, at the end of the presentation. <clears throat> and so please enter any questions that you have in the Q&A box as we go uh, through the presentation. And uh, Patricia will be helping to um, facilitate the discussion and uh, we'll be monitoring the questions as they come in. Um, additional comments can also be submitted via Open Town Hall and I will share some more information on that uh, in the presentation or by contacting the project manager, uh, myself, at evan.dintiman at montgomeryparks.org. Some important links and contacts, um, we will share these again throughout the presentation. So if you miss writing them down now, uh, you'll have another opportunity. But the Open Town Hall uh, is a, a place to go and uh, <clears throat> take a survey about this project and answer some questions. The project website also has links to the Open Town Hall and information on the project. And my contact information um, is listed at the bottom there, uh, my email address and phone number. So the agenda for tonight's presentation, uh, first, we're going to look at the playground renovation program. Uh, next, we'll talk about Glen Hills Local Park and the scope of this project. And then last, we will look at some playground examples, um, playground equipment examples, and then have a discussion and hopefully answer any questions you may have. So first we'll look at the playground renovation program here within Montgomery Parks. So when we start designing playgrounds and looking at new playground projects, first we have to remember that play is such a fundamental part of each child's life. And so, um, play enhances cognitive, social, emotional, and physical development. Uh, children learn and explore and manipulate their environments. Um, they also learn to interact and socialize with each other through play. So in that way, play is perhaps the most influential uh, part of a child's life and development. Here within Montgomery Parks, we have 275 playgrounds. Each of those is inspected monthly by a certified playground safety inspector. Comprehensive playground renovations are made through the Playground Renovation Capital Improvement Program, and playgrounds in the current schedule for replacement are at the end of their useful life. The Playground Renovation Program, um, <clears throat> typically we, uh, have a life cycle of a playground to be approximately 20 years. And the average cost for a playground replacement similar to Glen Hills uh, is $250,000. So currently um, the funding renovates six playgrounds per year and that equates to a 46 year life cycle um, across the county. Um, there are approximately 123 playgrounds in the park system that are over 20 years old and that represents about 45%. When we prioritize playground renovations, we look at mainly these five categories. The first is the condition rating for each playground, which is assigned by our playground um, safety inspectors uh, on a yearly basis and helps us to prioritize what playgrounds may need renovated. The age of the play structure is also important. Uh, when looking at playground renovations, um, as I mentioned, 45% of our playgrounds in the county 
um, are over 20 years old. <clears throat> and so we look at age of the playground when we're prioritizing playground renovations. Next, wood playground equipment. Um, within the county, we are, we are looking to replace and phase out um, largely wood play equipment. And that's for a number of reasons. Um, the first and foremost being maintenance. Um, it, they're, they're more difficult to maintain. They, they don't have as long of a lifespan. Um, and then secondly, you know, we've got issues like splintering and, and insects and, and other issues that um, we, are, we are phasing out wood. So wood play equipment like what you see at Glen Hills um, is, is a priority uh, for us as well. Um, next is the inspector's priority. So our playground safety inspectors may assign priority for a number of different reasons. Uh, one may be the playgrounds in a poor um, location or they have trouble sourcing you know, materials or hardware to repair and replace um, those playgrounds. And last but certainly not least is equity. Um, here in Montgomery Parks, we wanna make sure that um, every corner of the county um, is receiving, um, you know, really great amenities and facilities. And so, you know, we have a focus on, um, you know, equity in our playground renovations as well, looking at low income neighborhoods and also neighborhoods that have high diversity. So there is no federal playground safety law, but most states enforce playground safety as a standard of care. The MNC PPC and Montgomery Parks follow the, the following guidelines and standards. Um, those include CPSC, which is the Consumer Product Safety Commission, ADA, which is the Americans with Disabilities Act, ASTM, which is American Society for Testing Materials, and IPEMA, IPEMA, the International Playground Equipment Manufacturers Association. So the design and construction process begins with, as I mentioned, prioritizing which playgrounds um, need renovation. And once we identify which playgrounds will be renovated in a, in a specific funding cycle, we hold a community meeting like we're doing tonight um, and hear the community needs, um, gather feedback and input, share the uh, department standards, and then we use all of that information to develop a concept design. Once we develop a concept design, we'll reshare that with the public to get some additional feedback, make sure we're heading in the right direction. And from there, we can develop construction documents, uh, get necessary permits, order equipment, and begin construction. Now we're gonna look at Glen Hills Local Park specifically. And I, I assume that many of you are here because you're an active user of Glen Hills Local Park, you live in the nearby uh, community, uh, maybe you have friends, uh, family, um, or neighbors that use the park. And so we appreciate you joining us tonight. Glen Hills Local Park is located west of Rockville and west of Watts Branch Stream Valley Park. And it mostly serves um, some surrounding neighborhoods of single family residential homes. Zooming in a little bit closer, you can see that the primary access for Glen Hills Local Park is off of Circle Drive. And the parking lot is a central hub to several different features in the park. First is the playground, which you see out towards Circle Drive. Next, there are two tennis courts, a half basketball court, a softball field, and a multi-use field. Next, we're gonna look at some photos of the existing conditions within the park and the playground. The existing parking lot is directly adjacent to the playground and we will be renovating the uh, playground to include ADA access from the parking lot directly to the playground. And so, um, you know, we'll make sure that we're, we're meeting ADA uh, standards there and that there is accessibility to the playground. Looking from a different angle, <clears throat> you can see the wood play equipment, which includes a uh, composite structure with a slide and some climbing elements two um, enclosed tot swings, and then a multi-user swing, which is the yellow um, tire swing that you can see on the left-hand side. You can also note that there's a wood timber border and an engineered wood fiber protective surface. 
looking from yet another angle, you can see the wood play equipment and also some wood benches, which will be replaced as part of this project as well. So the scope of the project includes new play equipment, seating for parents and caregivers, accessibility, which is a paved path from the parking lot to the playground, stormwater management, and the project budget is approximately $250,000. So now we're going to share some um, examples of playground equipment that's available um, and also some other uh, information around playgrounds. So it's worth noting when we kind of dive in here that the equipment you're seeing is, is just to spark some ideas and spark some interest um, and represents what's possible at Glen Hills. So we haven't decided what equipment's going in. We haven't picked the colors or the layout. Um, so you know, this is all just, um, you know, to, to generate some ideas. So the typical components for a playground renovation include protective surfacing, an accessible route, and separate activities for children ages two to five and five to 12. And it's worth noting that these age ranges are based on childhood development studies and also consumer safety standards. A mixture of activity types, seating for parents and caregivers, and maintenance access. Playground equipment that is suitable for two to five-year-olds may include enclosed swings, simple slides, crawl tubes, balancing activities, multi-spring toys, spinning activities, jumping and bouncing activities, easy climbers, simple bridges, imaginary play, and interactive play. So these are some photos of, of what might be possible out at Glen Hills. These represent what you know, equipment manufacturers are making these days. Um, you can see here on the left, uh, there's a spring toy uh, that has bouncing and rocking, um, a climbing and balancing um, kind of series of ropes and platforms that are low to the ground. That's up in the right-hand corner. And then down on the bottom, the bottom right-hand corner, you can see a multi-user piece um, that is spinning and allows uh, children to kind of interact with each other. And then in the background there, um, you'll see some higher elements and those are more suitable for five to 12 year olds. So what we're looking at in the bottom right is that foreground element. Some more examples up in the upper left, um, you've got this kind of hollowed out log that uh, can serve as a tunnel or um, a climber or can you know, spark some imagination and imaginative play. In the upper right, there's a simple slide and down below there's climbing and bouncing uh, elements. Playground equipment for five to 12 year olds may include swings, challenging slides, chain or cable walks, freestanding climbers, towers, horizontal climbers, parallel bars, track rides, vertical sliding poles, and spinning activities. Some examples may include the spinner on the left-hand side, uh, a couple different uh, climbers. You can see in the upper right, there's kind of that rock wall in the foreground. And then in the background on the left-hand side, there's a um, kind of a rope climber. And then on the, the right-hand side, there's kind of a set of parallel bars that are, um, you know, climbing bars there. And then in the bottom right, there's a uh, composite piece that includes some climbers, a rope bridge, and a tower with a slide. On the left-hand side here, um, you see a tower that includes a couple different challenging slides, and then a rope bridge and tunnel in the upper right. And then in the lower right, there's a multi-user swing that allows several different um, kids to uh, play and, and swing together. So color is another, um, another place where the community, community can really give us some good input. Um, you know, what, what colors would, would you like to see for the play equipment out at Glen Hills? So the equipment pickered here is, again, 
not something specific to what we may use at at Glen Hills, but it's just to show uh, some different color options. And many of the manufacturers these days provide a whole range of different color choices. And so we can get pretty creative with color, uh, but we'd love to hear from the community what different colors you'd love to see. So you can see there's cool some cool colors, warm colors, natural colors like browns and tans and greens, or uh, bright colors. And so for public input, I mentioned Open Town Hall. That's going to give you an opportunity to go on, answer a, a multiple choice survey, uh, some open-ended questions. And some of the questions you'll see on the Open Town Hall survey include, what are your priorities for activities and types of play equipment? Are there playgrounds that you've been to that have equipment or features that you and your children find interesting? So maybe those are playgrounds in Montgomery County maybe they're playgrounds in other states or other cities um, that you've seen. So share that with us and, and maybe we can do something, um, you know, equally as creative at, at Glen Hills. Um, are there play themes that are of interest to you, uh, like nautical themes or natural, um, natural themes? And then as I mentioned before, what colors would you like to see on the new play equipment? And as you're thinking through these questions and as you're on the open town hall, um, providing your feedback. Make sure you pull in the most important <laughs> folks for uh, playground design, which is your, your kids. Um, the end user is really important. Um, and we want to make sure that, you know, your kids get a say in, in what this playground looks like as well. So please, as you're filling out the open town hall, um, bring your kids in and, and get their feedback as well. So as I mentioned, the open town hall, it should be up, I think, tonight, maybe tomorrow morning, and it'll be open for uh, several weeks. Uh, so please, you know, go on this link, even if you've attended this community meeting, provided feedback or asked questions here, it's still really important to uh, share um, your feedback via the survey and the open ended questions. And you're also welcome to share this link with any neighbors or community members that use um, Glen Hills and would like to have their feedback heard as well. So um, as we kind of wrap up the presentation, I have a few more slides. I just wanted to remind everybody that now's a good time to get some questions into the Q&A box. So um, visit the top right of your screen and find that Q&A box. And if you have any questions for us, um, please get them in there and uh, we'll be able to have a nice discussion at the end of the presentation. So the project timeline is uh, roughly as follows. In winter 2022, hold a community meeting. That's what we're doing tonight. And um, then collect public comments on the Open Town Hall webpage. Um, come spring, we'd love to have a uh, concept design based on the feedback we get tonight and the Open Town Hall feedback. Um, and then we will reshare that, as I mentioned, on the project webpage and also through Open Town Hall to make sure we're heading in the right direction. Once we have a concept design that you know, the community is happy with, we will finalize the design, develop construction documents, likely this summer. And then we aim to get permits and begin construction sometime in the winter of 22 or the winter of 23. And our goal is next year, right around this time when the weather's getting nice and folks are eager to get outside, uh, we can have a nice, uh, beautiful new playground at Glen Hills. So that leads us to our discussion. And I'm just gonna leave this uh, page up while we chat. Um, it's got the Open Town Hall link, the project webpage, my contact information, and also the contact information for our uh, information center and our customer service line. So I'll just leave this up while we chat and um, I'm gonna hand it over to Patricia. Okay, thanks, Evan. Um, I'm Tricia McManus, our design section manager. And as Evan mentioned, um, we do have other staff uh, members of our project team on the call. I'm um, Kathy Deerstein, our overall playground pro project manager, um, Richard Carmen, our park manager, and Jen Bruno, our project engineer. So if you have any questions, you know, related to other topics, related topics, whether it's park maintenance or um, 
you know, how stormwater management and some of those other aspects of the project. We do have our whole team here to help answer questions. So we only have one question in the um, in the Q and A now. So there you go. Um, uh, I'm I'm glad. Keep um, uh, keep adding them. So um, our our first question um, is how for Evan. I think is how. How big will the new playground be relative to the existing playground? Thanks, Tricia. So um, local park playgrounds usually range about 3,000 to 5,000 square feet. And so we're not going to be expanding too much larger than the, the current footprint of the current playground. Um, you know, but we will be utilizing the space um, a lot more. So, you know, what's currently there um, kind of spreads out you know, a, a, along the space. And, and certainly we can fit a lot more in, um, into the current space. So um, do know that we will do everything we can to get as many uh, features into the space. I, there'll be a, a structure for two to five year olds, a structure for five to 12 year olds. Um, there'll likely be a, a several freestanding pieces. Um, there's certainly room for uh, swings for both two to five-year-olds and five to 12-year-olds. So we will be uh, including quite a bit more um, into the playground. Okay, thanks, Evan. And just to add to that, I think the the size of the, the pad for that playground area is kind of defined by slopes and, and you know, we're limited to kind of using that flat pad. But as Evan, just to add to what Evan said, you know, a lot of the new playground equipment, you can go very high. So you can get, you know, structures with a lot of height that have a lot more things to do on them, even within the same amount of space. So I think with that old wood equipment, uh, we can certainly do a lot better with, uh, with and get a lot more in there than the space that we have. So um, we have a question about how many people are on the webinar um, because they don't see the list of participants. I see 21 on, on right now. So it's, you know, a moderate um, number of people. And um, we have a question here. Are there recently renovated playgrounds that you can share with us so that we could see potential options in person? And I'd like to address that question to Kathy, who, you know, handles many of our playgrounds. And Kathy, if you could um, provide some examples of some of our more recently renovated playgrounds and where they're located that people might be able to, to uh, bring their kids and test them out and see what they like. <laughs> yeah, good question. Um, I, I'm Kathy Deerstein. I'm the coordinator for the playground renovation program. And I designed and installed your original playground that you see right now. So for that last question, they've come a long way. But um, some of our more recent playgrounds are, um, there's one up at Damascus Recreational Park. Um, oh gee, I wish I had, uh, now I'm going blank on all of our new playgrounds, but um, I can, uh, I can make a list and put, post it on the open town hall so or the web page so you can get an idea of um, more that you can go visit. Okay, thanks, Kathy. And um, yeah, we can, yeah, if I went to my computer now, I could look yeah. at all the ones we've recently implemented. But maybe if we have time, like during, if, if you have time, Kathy, to kind of, yeah. you could add them to the chat. Um, if, you know, while we're going through other questions, if you think of any, and then we'll, we'll certainly, um, we'll certainly post them on the website, you know, with the meeting minutes of this meeting with, you know, some okay. additional places to look at, but yeah, we, yeah, I'm, I'm right here. I'll... Okay. Okay. If you can, and if not, we'll post it, okay. um, we'll post it on the website. So, um, we have a question or a comment here. As a close neighbor to Glen Hills Park, we're concerned about parking availability, especially during the baseball, football, and soccer seasons when people uh, park along the street due to lack of parking. So is there, are, is there planning for additional parking? And we hadn't planned on 
additional parking as part of this project. It was, you know, specifically to renovate the playground, but um, I'm, I'm interested to hear what the issues are and, 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 you know, if that's something we should be taking a look at in the future. And I'd like to ask Richard Carmen, our park manager, um, if you have any comments on parking as you, you'd be mo more familiar with how the park is used and what other issues there might be. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Richard Carmen, Senior Manager for uh, Southern Parks. Uh, yeah, I know it's, parking is always an issue that we uh, are always trying to figure out ways to improve upon. Uh, and this being one of the many parks that we're always looking at because we, we can't really expand upon the parking lot inside because of amenities around it, such as the ball fields, tennis courts, playground, et cetera. Uh, but we are always trying to think of ways that we can improve maybe parking on the roadside or stuff. We, we, are, we do want to look into it. Uh, we have some other meetings about um, other park amenities that maybe we could bring this up as well. But um, certainly it's something we're always looking for in any park road, not just, not just Glen Hills, uh, finding ways to improve upon any amenity, including parking. So um, don't have any answer at the moment, but like I said, we'll, we'll definitely look into it. And if, if we, as we hear more, we can share it through the open town hall and, and through customer service as well. We are um, going to provide, you know, ex accessible, we're going to upgrade the um, accessible parking spaces to current standards and make sure we have a um, accessible spaces available to the playground. And we could, we can look at that time and just see what the striping is on the parking lot and see if there's potential to, you know, restripe if the spaces, I don't know the condition of the park off the top of my hand, off the top of my head, but if, if, you know, and some of our older parks, like the play, the parking spaces are really wide. So we could look to see if there's any easy way we could get efficiencies. And I know that, um, you know, if Richard's group is looking at parking and, and managing the overall park, sometimes, um, you know, when um, games are permitted, we can, uh, you know, it, we've had certain parks that are very highly used that sometimes we can, um, we can, you know, we can change the times, the time slots that are permitted so that there's not so much overlap with different teams coming in if if it's if this there there are permitted fields here so there may be some things we could look at you know if there's a, a a significant issue in terms of how the fields are permitted as well as we could we could look to see if there's any efficiencies we could um, make in the parking lot but it it isn't really part of this project but I you know I'm sure we could take a look at because we're we're looking at you know, upgrading the um, ADA parking spaces. So um, that's a good point that we can, we can at least investigate a little bit. So um, the, there's a couple comments here about playground equipment um, that, you know, the Greenbrier local park, yeah, that's nearby and that tower is nice. Um, would something like that fit? And, you know, we could, we can look at that type of equipment, but those tall towers are definitely similar th things to that we could, I, I think we can consider. And then um, an interest in tall slides, tall climbing poles, climbing rope, climbing rope ball. What is that? Kathy, do you know what that is? Is she there? Uh, I, you... I am. Okay. I'm back. Um, I think what they might be referring to is the shape of the um, frame for the um, climbing structure. They have like um, a rounded form and then the net is inside of that. I hope that's correct. <laughs> okay, and if not, um, maybe you can, uh, if we didn't get it right here, um, you can put another comment in the Q&A. <laughs> okay. um, no, I'm, I mean, Owl, the, the person who made the comment. So oh. um, so here's another comment. Um, are there additional improvements being planned for uh, Glen Hills Park? Uh, like a walking trail with exercise stations would be really cool. And, um, you know, we're not looking at areas beyond the playground itself. I mean, we could consider, 
you know, uh, you know, Evan, you might want to help address this, but, you know, we could consider if, if people were really interested in fitness equipment, we might be able to fit one or two pieces of equipment, you know, in, in near the playground area, if that was really a priority for the community, but that would take away some of that pad and that space we have, you know, for the playground. So I don't know if Evan, you want to, um, you have anything to add to that? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, I think that's a great idea, but as Trisha said, you know, we're, we're a little limited on space due to the slope over there. Um, but, you know, if that is a priority for the community, please note that in the open town hall. Um, and also feel free to shoot me an email um, and, and share that with me. And, you know, the email is a great way to share photos with me, with me. Like if you have a photo of that climbing rope ball, um, you know, feel free to send a photo of that. And, you know, that way we can kind of, uh, you know, really see what what the vision is for the space. But um, we're, we're open to, to suggestions and, and um, you know, I, I, I do think that too much fitness equipment would probably limit the play equipment, but, um, but it's definitely something we can consider. And, and I do know, um, maybe Richard can, can kind of touch on this, but I, I do know there may be some um, small improvements to the park outside of this project that are being discussed. Um, and I don't know how much I can speak to that, but I do think the park is being looked at for some minor improvements outside of the playground. Um, that's not part of this scope of work. Yes, uh, you would be correct. We are looking at every amenity really and see where we can improve, whether it's aesthetically or just in, uh, improvements in general. One example I can tell you is that uh, I, I requested that the, the lighting at, on the tennis course be improved and they're gonna replace it with LED lighting. So I look for that in the near future to be uh, upgraded as well. So yeah, we are constantly looking at things and see what we can afford, what, where can we uh, plan for the, the now and in the future as well. So yeah, constantly looking. If you have any ideas, please send them to us. So uh, we'll gladly take a look and see what we can accommodate or not. Okay, and Richard, while you're on, um, don't go away. <laughs> this next question's for you. Um, will, will we continue, continue to have portable toilets available? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, we just, uh, we have a, a running list of several parks that include um, uh, portable, portable toilets. Uh, my question would be the community is what's currently there. Is that enough or is that too much? Uh, always let me know because, you know, wherever I need to add one or subtract a portable toilet, we can certainly do that. We want to have enough there for the community to be able to use, but we don't want to have too many that's going to be really an eyesore. So please let me know if, you know, what, what, what is currently there enough or would you like more or, or less? Please let me know. Uh, but yes, there will be portable toilets going forward. Okay, great. Thanks, Richard. And here's a comment also that the current parking spaces seem to be okay with, you know, and efficient with the width and that uh, parking, there is parking overflow to the streets when there are baseball games, but the games will only happen a few times a year. So there's normally plenty of parking. Well, that's good to know. And the ADA is space is pretty much not used, uh, but we, you know, that is a requirement uh, for every 25 parking spaces, you need at least one um, accessible space. So we, we are required to provide them even if you know, they don't get heavily used in the, but hopefully if we build a nice playground, we'll get more people and more different kinds of people coming to visit. So um, um, then the next question, oh, there's some other comments about um, equipment. Um, Falls Grove playground, um, a climbing rope ball, and maybe a picture of the rope ball was inserted. Um, yep, I, I answered that okay. one, so okay. it kind of good. disappeared, oh, but okay. I did so see the I didn't picture. See Thank that you. One. Oh, good, yep. great. And then how about pickleball lines on the tennis courts? Um, Richard, is that something you, you would be able to address? Well, I will say this. Um, we, we, my team certainly puts down the pickleball lines. Oh, cool. uh, but, I, I, you know, I know Evan's been working on that with um, uh, one of our other uh, uh, Chuck Kynes. I, I forget his title name, but Evan, uh, I don't know. Do you have more information on, on pickleball lines or pickleball in general at Glen Hills? Yeah, so I received a, an email about um, pickleball at Glen Hills. And so I've passed that on to Chuck Kynes, who is one of the planners here uh, with Montgomery uh, Planning Department. Um, he manages pickleball in Montgomery County, um, and you can find his contact information on our website. Um, 
but that they are aware that there is a desire to have pickleball lines on the tennis courts at Glen Hills. And, and I think that is being pursued. So um, you're welcome to check in with Chuck Kynes on that. Um, but I have passed that comment along. Um, and we, we've received that comment a few times. So uh, hopefully, hopefully we see some movement on that. But, uh, but yeah, that's all I have on, on the pickleball. Okay, thanks, Evan. And here's a comment. What about plans for picnic, picnic tables or benches or other areas that people can bring food to eat when the weather is nice, you know, especially with COVID and offering more outdoor areas? And, and I think providing tables and places to sit and amenities, those are things we can, we can easily add to the playground area, I think, you know, that's, we can plan for that. So I mean, those are things we would want to consider. Um, and I don't know if anyone wants to add either Richard or- Evan. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely jump in here. Um, uh, certainly, uh, you know, we're, we are you know, currently going through our inventory, you know, of just my region, alone, the Cabin John region, uh, going through all our 90 parks and trying to upgrade all the benches and the picnic tables that we have. But parks like this that maybe need a bench or, or a picnic table, we're certainly, you know, we'll gladly add them because uh, we have some in our stock. And if uh, well, I'll definitely come out there probably in the next week or so, take a look, survey where we can probably add some and, and see if we can uh, add a picnic table or two or, you know, put them around the playground, something to help out. Because I agree, you know, in times like these, we want to be outside a little bit more and, and eat outside, enjoy the weather when it gets nice, not like today. Um, and if we can, if we can accommodate, we certainly will. So um, if you have any ideas for benches around the park too, let me know. I'll, I'll gladly uh, entertain that and take a look and see what we can do. That's great, Richard. And that'll happen faster than the playground. So good for you, Richard. Thank you. <laughs> um, I don't see any more questions, but please feel, please um, add some more questions or comments as you have them. Kathy, do you have Thank some? You. I, I'm back. Okay. Um, off the top of my head in the last few years, we've done um, like 13, just quickly off you know, um, around the county, Damascus Regional Park, Hunters Woods, Rock Creek Regional Park, Waring Station, Sundown Road, Dale Drive, General Getty, West Fairland, Dewey, Newport Mill, Rays Meadow, Wheaton Claridge, Wells, and they all have a variety of different types of equipment. So if you want to get a good cross section and we will post the addresses so they can, um, you know, visit them at their leisure and kind of get an idea of what we are doing out there. That's great. Thanks, Kathy. So we'll, we'll provide that information in, in the meeting notes and on the website, but that's great. Yeah. And definitely the addresses and locations. So, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because they're all over. Okay. Um, okay. So here's a comment about you know electronic uh, playground toys only you know hardly last and and break. So that would not be something that's not something we normally put in anyway. But that's that's a good comment. We agree. We agree as well. Yeah, and a lot of the manufacturers are now coming out for coming out with. Um, human powered equipment that it'll, you know, play music or it'll do something, but you have to actually make it work. Yeah, okay, that's great. So um, keep adding any comments or questions that you have. And actually I'm gonna call out to our engineer, Jen, Bruno, um, and Jen, is there, you know, any, Anything you want to add about sort of the engineering aspects of playgrounds and what we'll be looking at and um, some, you know, your role on the project? Yeah, um, sure. Um, my role is actually pretty minimal here because uh, we are on top of a hill where the playground is currently. So there's not a lot of water that hits that playground. Um, we are going to be adding the under drain to the playground, though, so that when it rains, that mulch doesn't turn into a pool. Um, it helps with the, uh, so the water will filter through it and it'll go out a little pipe, a little perforated pipe underneath the playground and it'll come out the side of the hill below. 
So that's really um, the major bit of my <laughs> my work at this location. Yeah, but we always we always need you. So <laughs> yes, nobody wants a puddle in a playground. Uh, right. That's, mud puddles are not what we're aiming right. for here. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Jen. Um, and here we have a, a comment. We use playgrounds with our grandchildren, and we mostly go to more updated playgrounds. So they're really excited about the renovation. So yeah, we are too. And when I see those photographs of that old wood equipment, it's like, oh my gosh, this is, I'm so glad we're getting rid of this. So um, we're excited about making, making these um, playgrounds better too. So um, we have so many playgrounds in poor condition and we can't get to them as you know quickly as we like, but it's always, um, it's always good to take one of the really bad ones out so <laughs> so um oh oh there's more i'm i gotta keep scrolling <laughs> um what kind of covering is planned rubber type or stick with mulch i think this is about the surfacing so um evan do you want to address this sure so um we're going to stick with uh mulch which is which we call engineered wood fiber um it's a uh, it's a more engineered mulch uh, that's built for playgrounds and, and meets the, the safety criteria for fall heights. Um, and, you know, we haven't been using rubber much in the county. Um, it's difficult to source rubber that's sustainable. It's even more difficult to dispose of rubber when it's at the end of its useful life. So um, the mulch works well. We, we replace it and make sure it's, um, it's at the required depths. And so that's what we're proposing for this uh, for this park. And just to add to that, you know, we when we do use rubber surfacing, it's usually we have some unique circumstance that we need to use it, like we're on a steep slope where the where the wood fiber would just um, just wash away, or you know, we have areas that um, in floodplains, for example, that where they're just going to flood and the the surfacing will wash away or they don't drain very well. So we, we use them as the exception rather than the rule, um, just because the, the um, you know, the wood fiber is, is um, sustainable and it's readily available and it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's actually cost effective for us. I mean, it does have a higher maintenance cost because you have to make sure you keep the weeds out of it but you know the life cycle cost of the surfacing is lower with the wood fiber than the than the um, rubber surfacing so um, that that is about surfacing and if you have any additional questions please put them in there um, uh, and a question could we provide shade structures um, do you want to address that. I, I can talk about shade. Yeah, so shade is really important around um, playgrounds, but shade structures tend to um, eat up budget and, and elongate timelines. And, um, you know, the, so so what we try to do, and, and I think what we'll do here at Glen Hills is to look at planting some additional trees. There are some trees out there currently, which shade the playground for a decent portion of the day, but adding some trees, um, looking at equipment that has fixed roof structures as part of the equipment. So it's pre-manufactured with, um, with like a, you know, a roof panel on top of the, the towers and on top of some of the landings. And so, you know, we are gonna introduce shade in any way that we, we can, um, but I, I don't think we'll be doing a shade structure as part of this playground renovation, but we will be thinking about shade. Okay, thanks, Evan. And then um, a comment ab about like the surfacing at Hadley's Park. And actually that uh, rubber surfacing, we've had a great deal of um, problems with. It's, it's a, a rubber tile um, that is actually um, gets chewed by animals and it's the, the tiles are coming up and apart. So those kinds of surfaces, they're very expensive and um, you know they, they're not effective for us. And a, a, a playground like Hadley's is, and when we replace that playground, we will certainly still use a rubber or, or, or some kind of you know stabilized surface because that playground was designed with um, to serve accessible 
population. So in a case like that, we would definitely use the, um, the rubber surfacing, but we, we, we don't typically use it where we don't have to. Like in this case, we have a very um, level grade. The rubber also gets hot, you know, in the sun. So um, we, we, we're really, um, I don't know if Kathy or Richard, you wanna add anything about surfacing, but I just saw Richard, you put your camera on. So um, I'm glad to have anyone else kind of weigh in. Well, the technology is always changing too. And I know that a lot of the manufacturers of that kind of surfacing are always trying to find ways to make it sustainable and um, disposable when it comes to, when it, you know, gets to the end of its life cycle. But um, we're always looking for something because it, the engineer wood fiber is um, an accessible product, but it takes the maintenance to maintain it at that accessible level. So to address the ADA, we really need a product like that. But that's somewhere, I mean, we are constantly reviewing the studies and um, looking at new products. Yeah, and, and to speak on the maintenance aspect, it is a little bit of a headache, um, not a little bit, a lot of a headache. Um, with the way that the way that the, the, the panels or, or the tiles are set up, uh, many many things can fall inside those holes, especially in a little like like nuts and stuff for, for the acorns or other a, or animals. And they tend to dig it up and, and rip it up and it easily splits apart. Um, there are much better products in the market now and we're, we're constantly looking at different things that, can, that we can use that one is not so hot because as Patricia mentioned, it does get very hot in the summer times. And if you're not paying attention, if you go there with bare feet or something, you can easily burn a foot. So uh, we're, really, we're really trying to find the best products in the market to see what can be used. And at times it can be costly, but we're always looking at different things um, to, to try to, an alternate to uh, engineer roof fiber as, you know, as Kathy mentioned. Yeah, surfacing, I mean, there's pros and cons to all of the types of surfacing and and it's, it, it's, a, it's a balancing act trying to figure out um, what's what's the best for different circumstances. Um, here's about the port portable johns are very much appreciated during the warm months. However, the park is used all, all year. So can't the toilet stay there all year? Richard? Yeah, well, this is the real reason I turned my camera on. I knew this question's coming up. Um, yeah, no, it's good. Like there are parks that we do look at and do keep the port of johns 20, you know, 24 seven year round. Um, and most, most of the parks we do not. Uh, we have to weigh the pro, pros and cons. If there's a real need for portable, uh, portable toilets to remain uh, year round, we'll certainly look at it. Uh, we also look at the data with the, uh, that we get from the, uh, the contractors to tell us how often they're used as well. Um, the, the, the downside of leaving portable toilets out there year round is that one, you, you, may, you could have homeless issues in there. You could have uh, you know, people trying to uh, maybe bored people that like to tip them over you know, unnecessarily in the winter time. And so you know, we have to look at the pros and cons of everything, but certainly if, it, if, it, if, the, if the data shows that we need it or if the community tells us they need it for you know, year round, we'll definitely look into it because we, we, we definitely have a running list throughout the park system that we update constantly. So uh, yeah, we'll definitely take a look. Okay, thanks, Richard. And then here's a comment that there's a lot of lawn between the playground and the adjoining baseball field. So in theory, we could extend the footprint of the playground to fit more things in. So I'm uh, Evan, um, do you wanna address that one? I think there's a significant grade change, but um, I, you're more familiar with the actual site conditions than I am. Yeah, there is significant grade change. Um, you know, sort of the only flat piece of, the, of that property um, is the, the ball fields, the tennis court and the, and the playground. Um, everything in between is, uh, is quite a, sort of sloping. Um, but we can certainly look at it. We wanna maximize the space that, that we can um, while also considering the budget we have for this project, the timeline. Um, but you know, I, I certainly appreciate that comment. And you know, as we're going through the concept design, we're going to make sure that we you know use the space we need, um, while also maintaining existing trees and and uh, working with the grade that we have. But um, really do appreciate the comment. Okay, if there's anything more, please add it to the um, 
Q and A, and I don't know if any of our team have any other things they want to share. We can wait and see if uh, people have any any more comments, any questions, or or if there's anything we didn't quite address, you know, to your satisfaction, you know, please feel free to put it put a clarification in and ask another follow up. Oh, here here we are. I got to keep scrolling. <laughs> So um, we need uh, swings for teenagers, not just toddlers. And that's an excellent comment. Um, I, I, I think that's a great idea. And, you know, we're, we don't focus enough on teens, I don't think. And um, yeah, that's certainly something we can, we can take a look at and, and think about. So um, that's, a, that's a great comment. You know, you know, we, we've put a couple of, um, we're just starting in a few projects to put in these um, bench swings that are, they're not really play equipment, but they're like site furniture that's just a bench that swings, kind of like, you know, the old fashioned porch swing. And they're just nice places to hang out. So um, that's kind of what teens like, or just a little hangout space. So you know, that's certainly something we can take a look at and see how we can, um, how we can think about serving our, you know, older, our teens and our older kids. So that's a great comment. And, um, you know, you're welcome to go on as well to the open town hall with your teens. I, I, I'm not sure if, if there's age restrictions on making an account on open town hall, but certainly go on with your teens and, um, you know, allow them to share some feedback as well. Because, you know, as Tricia said, we're, we're really uh, focusing on teens in our parks as well. Um, and so if there's, you know, things your teens would love to see at this playground, you know, please share that and let us know. Okay, here's a question. Can some of the tables have chessboard or checkerboards painted on them? And yes, I think that's certainly a possibility. And we've, we've put we've put those in some of our parks. So that's a great comment too. That's something we can, we can look at. We look at the, you know, we'll have to just look at the right product that it comes with that um, option, but certainly that's something we could, we could consider. So and Richard, oh, I saw him turn his camera on. So <laughs> if, well, I was going to make the comment that uh, one of our parks that I know that uh, over in the Meadowbrook region, uh, Getty Park, they, they has uh, they have che uh, checkerboards and, and chessboard tabletops so we can look at. So yeah, there's an example in our system that we've used before that we could maybe look to see if it works here or not. Great. Anything else? Well, we're, we're going to wait and see, you know, whatever comes through. Um, any other thoughts that you have or any questions? I see. Gosh, I just I just want to reassure people that whatever um, Evan is going to design and put in is they're really going to be pleased with it. And it's going to be a, a vast improvement, of course, of what's in there. But just to give them a little perspective when that playground that's there now went in, the total budget was like 60,000 for the equipment and the installation. So we've got uh, quite a bit more money to play with and more interesting equipment. That was state of the art when it went in. So Evan will, Evan will give you a great playground. Anything else? I see um, Michelle are, is, is posting some of these different playgrounds and links to them in there. And thank you, Susan and, um, and Michelle for adding all that additional information in the, in the chat. I had a, at the beginning of the meeting, a, a non-functioning uh, chat, which I post, posted things repeatedly because my chat wasn't working. So, uh, little bit of mess in the beginning, but we're, we're straightening it out now. <laughs> so, um, okay, here's a question. Uh, great presentation. Thank you for your the time and information. So if there's, if there's not anything else, we still have plenty of time, you know, we still have, um, you know, it, we're covering what's in the chat. Oh, here's, here's uh, 
how much does a tower like Greenbrier Park cost? So maybe Kathy, that's, that was sort of part of a major park renovation. So that was sort of a more expensive piece. Do you have any sense of the budget on that one? No, but that was a custom piece. And, um, but now all the manufacturers are coming out with these towers that are more uh, reasonable for our purposes and that fit in a local park better than, um, Greenbrier had a lot of um, land up there to use. So the playgrounds kind of spread out where um, like Trish said at the beginning, when you use these towers, you can go up and utilize the space. But um, a whole playground, I, I've been doing some structures on a couple playgrounds down county here. And um, they're probably around, I mean, I can do the whole playground for um, 100,000 or less. So that's just the equipment to give you an idea. But it's about double that for the installation, right? So when you spend about 100 on the equipment, it's about 200 overall for the surfacing, the drainage, the install, right? It's about double. Yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah. So uh, and Greenbrier was definitely a, a higher cost, you know, playground because it, we did have, you know, a multi-million dollar project right. Right. to renovate the park so we we had more money to spend and we had more space and i think that one did have like grade changes so it was tying that into the structure as well so it was a little bit more complicated site as well but you know but you know like kathy said we can get some of those functions in in you know lower cost equipment um so um, you know, that seems to be covering what questions that we've had. And um, I just want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. And we'll follow up and post meeting notes um, on our project webpage, and we'll get the names of all those recent playgrounds and, and the addresses in there. Um, so, and you'll have plenty of opportunities to provide, you know, input as we move forward. Um, we encourage everyone to go onto the open town hall. Um, page to complete the survey and provide your comments there. Just keep in mind, once you do it once, you can't go back on again. So you might want to look at the questions and think about it before you put your input in. But if you have, you know, additional questions or comments you think of later, you know, whether after you've done the open town hall or before, or if we didn't address an issue um, well enough tonight, um, please feel free to contact Evan directly. I see a question here. Do we need to make an account on the open town hall? And I don't, I think if you want to register your name to be contacted, you have to create an account, but I don't think you have to. Does anyone know? Can any, anyone on here answer that question? Evan, do you know? Or I, I, Yeah, I think, I, I don't know if Melissa can, um unmute and share, but I don't think you need an account to be an anonymous, um, you know, survey poster. Right, that's that... correct. If you okay. want to submit an anonymous survey, then you don't need an account, but then we won't be able to contact you by email with future updates. So you can make an account and submit your email and it won't be shown to anybody. So I, that's the, the best option, I think. Okay, thanks, Melissa. That's great. Um, so any any questions, any any follow up, you know, feel free to contact Evan um, directly. And I would like to acknowledge, you know, other team members that have been supporting us tonight. Who you just saw, Melissa Chotner. We also have Michelle Ramirez and Susan um, um, Susan. Oh my gosh, Stafford. Stafford. <laughs> I was going to say Stratton. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Susan. So from our public affairs office who um, have been supporting us tonight, as well as Kevin Hansen, um, who's been providing technology support. So everything that we do um, is a team effort. So I want to thank everybody um, for making, you know, making it work. So um, 
Evan, I'll just turn it back to you if you have any final comments to close the meeting. Yeah, just a couple quick comments. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, it was a great discussion, a lot of great feedback that I can work with as I'm designing the uh, playground. Um, please, again, feel free to reach out to me with any questions. Please visit the Open Town Hall. And um, I'm just really excited to be working on uh, Glen Hills. So I, uh, I can't wait to share with you what I, uh, what I come up with. So uh, thanks again for a great meeting and have a great rest of your evening and rest of your week.